Hi everyone, welcome to this lesson where today we're talking about the Pythagorean theorem and the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. So first off, we're gonna start with the Pythagorean theorem, which it says if triangle ABC is a right triangle with legs A, B, and hypotenuse C, then A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So this is a really special theorem that only works with right triangles and a couple things to notice about the way this triangle is labeled. Notice we label the vertices of a triangle with capital letters, and then the side opposite angle A, you'll notice we use a lower, lowercase letter for A, and the side opposite the vertice B, we use a lowercase b, and then the side opposite angle C is a lowercase letter c. And in this case, A and B are gonna represent what's called the legs. And the legs are the two sides of a triangle that create the right angle. The hypotenuse is always the third side. So it's the side that's created by the intersection of the two, um, where the two vertices of the legs meet, or it's always across from the 90 degree angle. So the hypotenuse is always gonna be the longest side of a right triangle. Uh, the legs are always going to be smaller than the hypotenuse. Um, that's just things that we need to make sure we know vocabulary wise before we go forward. And so because of the right triangle that we have here, any right triangle, the square of one leg, plus the square of another, the other leg is going to be equal to the square of the hypotenuse, which is pretty cool. And we can use this theorem to help us solve for a missing leg or a hypotenuse. So if I gave you these four problems here, I know I'm blocking the fourth one, so we'll just wait a little bit on that. If I gave you these figures here and I said, okay, I have a leg of three and a leg of six, I need to cal uh, calculate my hypotenuse C. And again, I know it's the hypotenuse because it's the side opposite the 90 degree angle. I would say, okay, well, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I would plug in my values for A and B. Now, the thing is here, it won't matter if it's three squared plus six squared or six squared plus three squared because the legs can be interchangeable. But the hypotenuse always has to be in the right spot in the formula. So... If I end up adding these up, I get nine plus 36 and I get 45. Now I don't want C squared, I want just C. So to undo the square root, I would have to take, I'm sorry, to undo the squared, I'd have to take the square root on both sides. So C is now equal to the square root of 45. I'm not making note of the positive and negative square root of 45 because we're talking about a side length and that always has to be positive. And I just wanna rationalize, uh, I saw, excuse me, I wanna simplify this radical. So I have to break up 45 biggest perfect square that goes to 45 is nine. So this now becomes radical nine radical five, which is three radical five. And so the length of C I would say is three radical five units. In this next diagram, I'm actually given the hypotenuse of radical 43. I wanna solve for this missing leg A. So if I plug this into my Pythagorean theorem, I'm left with A squared plus five squared is equal to the entire hypotenuse here of square root of 43 squared. Now, some pretty cool things happen here is that, okay, well, it's a squared now plus 25, but look what happens. When you take the square root of 43 and square it, um, the square root and the squared symbol are actually opposite operations. They undo each other, and it, the answer is actually just 43. If that's kind of weird to think about, think about a number we can take the square root of. So if I said take the square root of 9 and then square it, well, the square root of 9 is 3, and that would be, I would then do 3 squared, and three squared is nine. So in essence, the square root and the square just kind of undid each other. And now I'm solving. So I need to solve for A. I would subtract 25 on both sides, take the positive square root, simplify radical 18, which becomes radical nine radical two, which then becomes three radical two. So the length of this leg is three radical two units. Next one. I need to solve for a leg. Again, I know I'm solving for a leg because it's one of the sides of the triangle that makes the right angle. So now I would plug in 10 squared is one of my legs plus B squared equals 12 squared. I know 12 is the hypotenuse. It's across from the 90 degree angle. Do my math, take the square root, radical four, radical 11, which becomes two radical 11 units. So this one, I'm given two legs, I need to solve for the hypotenuse. So radical five squared plus two radical three squared. Now notice I put the entire expression of two radical three in the parentheses, that's incredibly important. Um, when we go to do radical five squared, that just becomes five. 
Now think about this. When I do 2 radical 3 and I square it, you can think about it in two different ways. You can say, okay, well, I need to square the 2 and then square the radical 3, which think about it, 2 squared is 4. If I take the square root of 3 and square it, I get just 3. So it's really now 5 plus 4 times 3. Or you could do some math on the side. You could be like, I want to do 2 radical 3 and square it, which really means to just multiply it by another 2 radical 3, which is 4 radical 9, which is still 4 times 3. So you can either, uh, you know, give both factors the exponent of 2, or you can actually say, okay, well, squaring something means to multiply it by itself. Let me actually do 2 radical 3 times 2 radical 3 and get my answer that way, which then becomes 12. 5 plus 12 is 17. When you go to take the square root of 17, you can't simplify it any further, and so it's just square root of 17. Pythagorean triples. So understanding Pythagorean triples, um, triples are sets of numbers that just satisfy the equations of a squared plus b squared equals c squared. However, they're non-zero, so none of the values can be zero, and they're whole numbers. So we're not talking about any fractions, decimals, radicals, nothing like that. Um, if we do see fractions, decimals, um, you know, they may work. They may be values that satisfy the formula, but we don't call them a Pythagorean triple. We give that special name to just the whole numbers. So these are four examples of Pythagorean triples. There are more, but these are the most common ones that we will see. And if I took three, four, five, and let's say I multiplied them by two, Okay. I would get 6, 8, and 10, and guess what? 6 squared plus 8 squared is going to be equal to 10 squared. So think about this, right? 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, and 5 squared is 25. And 9 plus 16 is equal to 25. Well, look what happens when I take this triple, and I just simply multiply it by 2. 6 squared is 36. My writing is so bad right now, I'm so sorry. 8 squared is 64, and 36 plus 64, 10 squared is 100. So what ends up happening is that if you kind of put some of these Pythagorean triples to memory, and you remember, oh, 3, 4, 5, that's Pythagorean triple. If I have legs of 3 and 4, the hypotenuse is guaranteed to be 5. But you might see a, tri a multiple of that, and if I gave you this, 15, 20, 25, you would know, well, hey, 15, 20, 25 looks like it's just a 3, 4, 5 multiplied by 5. And so if 3, 4, 5 works, then 15, 20, 25 works. Not all sets of numbers are going to work, right? 1, 2, and 2 are not going to work. Um, 3, 4, and 6, you could try it out. It's just not going to work. But 3, 4, 5 works. And so any multiple of 3, 4, and 5 is going to also satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. 5, 12, and 13. So 5 squared is 25, 12 squared is 144, 13 squared is 169. And so 25 plus 144 is equal to 169. And so if you see any multiples of 5, 12, 13, whether I multiply it by 2 or I even multiply that triple by 10, these will all work for the Pythagorean theorem. 8, 15, 17, so any multiples of that. And then 7, 24, 25, any multiples of that. And I just did multiples of 2 and 3. So sometimes what will happen is you might be given a set of three numbers, three side lengths, and you might be asked, you know, can those be the sides of a right triangle? And so first of all, you want to look at those three values and be like, could I simplify them by something? Do they have a greatest common factor? In this case, they do. It's all two. So imagine you divided each one of these by two, and then it brought you back to 7, 24, 25, and that was one of the triples that you had memorized. You would know right away, yep, a 14, 48, and 50 is definitely a right triangle. Same thing with 50, 20, uh, 120, 130. If you looked at this and said, okay, well, the GCF is 10. Let me divide each one of these by 10. You'll end up with a 5, 12, 13, which if you have 5, 12, 13 memorized, then you're just going to know without even plugging them into the formula that it's going to be a right triangle. Okay, so it says, we can use this theorem to determine whether a triangle is a right triangle. Any multiple of a triple will be a right triangle. And that's actually what the converse of the Pythagorean theorem is. Not to find a missing side, but to actually say, because of the Pythagorean theorem, um, these sides are a right triangle or not. So we're going to take a look at these problems here. 
So this says determine whether the given side lengths form a right triangle. So basically, 4, 7, 11 definitely doesn't look like one of the triples and doesn't look like I can simplify it. But if I plug the values in, 4 squared plus 7 squared equals 11 squared. And I test it out. 4 squared is 16. 7 squared is 49. 11 squared is 121. 16 plus 49 does not add up to 121. So it's definitely not going to be the sides of a right triangle. 21, 72, 75. Now notice you could divide each one of these by 3, right? And if I divided 21 by 3, I get 7. If I divide 72 by 3, I'll get 24. If I divide 75 by 3, I get 25. And that actually was one of our triples up here, 7, 24, 25. So look what's now going to happen. Let's say you didn't notice that it's actually a multiple of that. And you went ahead and you just substituted the values into the Pythagorean theorem. Well, 21 squared is 441. 72 squared is 5184. 75 squared is 5625. And if I add 441 and 5184, I do get 5625. It actually gives me a true statement. And not only is it a right triangle, but it is a Pythagorean. Um, it's considered a Pythagorean triple because it's a multiple of it. 3 radical 10, radical, um, 3 radical 10, 24. So now, let's say you were plugging this into the Pythagorean theorem and you ask yourself, you know, I don't know which one is the hypotenuse. Remember, the hypotenuse is always supposed to be the largest side. So we know 3. We can compare it to 24. Radical 10, remember, ra radical 9 is 3. And so radical 10 is going to be just above 3. So I know 24 would have to technically be the value for C. And when I go and I square them, so 3 squared is 9, radical 10 squared is just 10, definitely 9 plus 10 is not going to be 576, and so there's no way it's a right triangle. Last one. Um, 9, 2 radical 10, and 11. And same idea here. If you're like 2 radical 10, I can't tell if it's greater than 11. Well, think about it. Radical 10 is just over 3. It's not 4. And if I do two times that amount, I'm going to get six point something. So I know it's definitely smaller than 11. 11 has got to be the greatest side. So now 9 squared is 81. 2 radical 10 squared. Remember, so we're seeing this skill again. So you do 2 squared is 4. Radical 10 squared is 10. So it's really saying 4 times 10. And 4 times 10 is 40. And 81 plus 40 is definitely 121. So this is, these are the sides of a right triangle. However, they're not a Pythagorean triple. So this top example, this would be an example where this is a right triangle and it's a Pythagorean triple. This one's just a right triangle, but it's not a triple because it has this radical here and a triple is just um, whole numbers. Televisions are measured by the screen's diagonal length. So if you were going to a store and you wanted to buy a certain TV, you don't measure the space widthwise to see how big you can fit the TV. You measure it diagonally. Okay, all TV dimensions are given by the diagonal. So it says, if the diagonal of this TV is 52 inches, so I'm just going to label that 52, and the width is 40 inches, what is the height of the TV? Round to the nearest tenth. So really what we have going on here is we have a Pythagorean theorem problem. We have a right triangle built in. This diagonal is actually the hypotenuse. And what we're solving for is a leg. It does say round to the nearest tenth. So usually when the Pythagorean theorem is used for word problems, we want to actually have an answer that makes sense. Um, if I get a radical in an answer, you're not going to go to, a, go to a store and see a TV and the package has like a radical as part of the length. It's going to be rounded to, you know, the nearest inch or tenth place or a centimeter, stuff like that. So 40 squared plus B squared or X squared, doesn't matter what you label it, equals 52 squared. You end up doing your calculations, subtract 1,600, take the square root of 1104, and you're going to get 33.2 inches. Again, it did say round to the nearest tenth, so that's what I'm putting for my answer. Okay, Pythagorean inequality theorem. So here's an interesting now twist to this. So since we know a right triangle satisfies a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then we're going to know... Okay, this is the Pythagorean uh, inequality theorem, that if you have a squared plus b squared, it's actually greater than c squared. Like if you set up some kind of inequality in that form, okay, if a squared plus b squared is actually greater than c squared, 
it's going to mean that the triangle that you're working with is actually acute. So if you take the two smaller sides and you square them and you compare it to the square of the third side and the sum of those two sides is greater, it's actually acute. And I made an equilateral triangle here to kind of prove it to you. So sometimes when I show this uh, theorem to my students, they may not remember. Like, hey, if it's greater, is that acute or is it obtuse? How do I remember? You can always make a basic equilateral and we know an equilateral triangle is acute. So if you were to use an equilateral, test it out and say, okay, well, the value of the smaller side squared is greater than the value of the third side squared. And I know an equilateral is acute, then that must mean the answer for whatever problem I have later on is also acute. Whereas here's now the opposite. If you take the sum of the, you square the two smaller sides and you add them up and it's less than the square of the third side. And so here's an example of five, five and an eight. If I did five squared plus five squared and compared it to eight squared, uh, 50 is gonna be less than 64. Whenever you have that situation, it actually means that the triangle is going to be obtuse. So if you take the sum of the squares of the smaller two sides and it's less than the third side, the third side is the square of it is just bigger than the sum of the two other sides, it is an, an obtuse triangle. And so usually if you can master the acute situation, then you know if it's the opposite, it's definitely going to be obtuse. And so if I gave you two sets of you know, problems like this, and I said, hey, practice it, see what kind of triangles these would be. If I said there's a triangle that has side lengths of two, three, and four, and I asked you, is it right, acute, or obtuse, you would take the two smaller sides, two squared plus three squared, and say, okay, what is it in comparison to the third side? Well, this ends up being that four plus nine is 13, 13 is less than 16, so the two, some of the two smaller sides is less than the square of the third side. The third side, the square is bigger, which means it's obtuse. Whereas if I have six, 10, and 11, six squared plus 10 squared, and I wanna compare that to 11 squared, well, six squared plus 10 squared ends up being 136. So the sum of the two, the squares of the two smaller sides is bigger than the third side. So the third side's not taking over. It's not as big as in comparison to the other two and that's when it is acute. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful for you. Bye.